Howdy, howdy. I'm going to do some pours today. It's been a while. So real quick, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. And I'll mix the last color at regular speed. And I'm going to fast forward through all of this. But first of all, what I'm going to use is Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White in the Court from Michaels. That's in my cup. It's already mixed up. And I have no clue what it's mixed up with because it was in my bottle and it was more liquidy. It's usually really thick in here. It is not made to pour straight out of the bottle. So I must have made um, a mixture and then put it back into the bottle or just added some water to it. I'm not sure. The consistency is pretty good. I probably am going to add a little flow troll to it to thicken it up a bit because I have a feeling that it was the end of a bottle. I've got chunks in it. It was the end of a bottle and I probably just added water to get all the final you know white out of the bottle and I never marked on my bottle that it was just paint and water so that's my theory is what that is I just posted a really cool fast speed video of a rainbow bottle bottom pour and I know that those paints had sat for days and thickened up just with a little saran wrap on top of them so each color. This is Prism Violet by Liquitex Basics. Liquitex Basics Light Blue Violet and Master's Touch Gray Purple mixed it together with a little Violet Prism Prism Violet mixed in to deepen it. This one is Deco Art Premium Quinacridone Violet. This one is from Walmart Dollar Rounding Leaf Green. This one is Artist Loft from Michaels Sap Green. And then the final one I'll mix for you at the end is Professional Artist Thalo Green by Artist Loft from Michaels. So I'll do that one at the end in regular speed. And the one other thing I want to do is I want to add a little shimmer to all my colors. And the way I do that is Artist Loft, which is Michaels carries an iridescent medium in a tube and this stuff is just magical. You put a squirt, as you can see, I'm just putting a squirt. I'm not measuring it. I never measure anything. I don't measure or weigh anything. But I'm going to do that to give it all a little bit of shimmer. So the other thing that I'm going to do because it's all different brands, it's going to be all different consistencies. And I want this on the thicker side so I can do the bottle bottom pour. My pouring medium is always one to one Floetrol. So here's a smaller bottle. You can also get it in the gallon. And um, I'm going to pour mine from the gallon, but I want to show you the smaller bottle too. I use this all the time. I don't use glue all. I don't use Liquitex pouring medium unless I want to do cloud pours. So that's what I'm going to be adding to all my colors. I usually do a one to one ratio. Since these are two paints, you could do more than one part flow trawl in any of these colors. You don't have to measure it. And I do want them thicker. So I'm just going to do one to one and check the consistency. And if it's like super thick, I'll add a little bit more Floetrol or water. And if it's the right consistency, I probably won't add anything to it. And I may still add a little water to all of them, but for bottle bottom pours, thickness of consistency is really key in not losing your shapes and unbleeding. And I am not going to use OGX or silicone to make cells. I don't want cells in this. So that's not my goal in this um, pour. So I'm going to first of all mix the iridescent medium into the paint colors. And then I'm going to add the flow trawl and really fast speed through all that. And then we'll come back for the final mixing of the last color. Okay.
Okay, so I've mixed the Floetrol in. I have not added water yet, but I am going to add water to some of them, but I wanted to show you the consistency I'm going for. And then I decided I'm going to do, do it through a sink strainer instead of the bottle bottom. So I do want a little bit more fluid. This last one is a professional high viscosity acrylic, so it is um, much thicker than the other ones, so I'm not going to use nearly as much paint, and I'm going to use a lot more Floetrol. I'm putting it about at the same level the other cups are, and then I want to still throw in my squirt of iridescent medium. And when you're mixing any colors, you always want to mix the paint and Floetrol together first to let them bind together, and then you want to add the water in the last step. Don't add your water into your paint first. It just it makes it harder for that to bind with the uh, Floetrol. Just add the Floetrol first and then the water. And the Floetrol is always going to lighten the color slightly, but it'll dry deeper in color, I promise. This one's really sparkly. And I can tell already that the consistency on this one is really just about perfect, just from the feel of it. If you see lumps when you're stirring, try to get them out ahead of time. It just makes everything so much easier. But, okay, so it, it barely drips off the stick. It's just a hair on the thick side. So this is a bottle of water and it's 90% water, 10% Floetrol. So when it comes out, it looks a little milky. That's why. And that also helps your water mix into your paint a little bit easier. So that's why I do that. And I learned that from Gina DeLuca a long time ago. So that looks pretty good. You want it to fall off your stick. You want a little slight mound. when it lands on the surface of your paint. So I'm going to check each of the consistencies. This one is definitely super thick. So this is a canvas. We've got push pins in the bottom, 12 inches. So I'm not going to put a base coat down because that makes it slide faster and I don't want it to slide faster. And I do want to kind of find the center. So that's the center right there. just so I know where to lay my thing down because sometimes you can look and it looks a little off. Um, so what I'm going to do is pour my colors and if I need to put a little white band of paint around the edge I will. But I'm just going to start off and I'm going to do like green. Okay, so already because I see that the colors are kind of squiggly, I could have left my paints on the thicker side. Another layer of white here. It's cool, there's a green area in the middle here. do is try to kind of even that out a bit but you know it's not really 
not really evening out per se, but. So I had this en envisioned in my head what I was gonna do with it, and because it did not come out really perfectly, I'm just gonna let it stretch out a bit. was not a good idea. And the reason being, I don't have it secured on the turntable. Okay, so let's take the turntable away. That's not going to work. It would have worked if I had the canvas secured. So I've already got it askew, so I'm just going to go ahead and tilt it. because I messed it up. But it's always fun. Even if you mess something up, it's always fun. So I'm gonna still, now I'm gonna drag my skewer through. It's an oval knife I got from Jerry's Ardorana online, and I, it's my favorite palette knife to use. It's oval, and there's no hard edges, so it makes softer markings. Okay, I'm going to stop on this one. It's pretty. It's different. It's not how I wanted it to turn out, but that's the way it is. So, there it is. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Click on the notifications bell to get notified when I get post new videos. I'm going to do a second video with these same colors and do a different technique that I'm excited to try. So look for that, and I'll see you on the next one. Hugs. Bye-bye.